now we know pretty much how a lens works. We know that if you have an optical axis and you have maybe a lens like that and you have an object, well, there's a couple ways we could keep up with it. One is we could do the three easy rays. We could trace the rays that we know will happen. We could use the equations we've been developing about the focal length. For instance, this ray we know would go through the focal length. And then maybe it would hit another lens, different curvature, and that would bring it up like this. And then maybe it would hit a negative lens, right? a con, uh, concave lens. And that would actually make it diffract out or refract out further. And who knows what it would do. And then another lens, and eventually maybe you would get a giant object. Who knows? So the way we've been keeping up with this is either with the math of our equations or by tracing specific rays. So now we're going to look at a new uh, uh, thing we're going to try. We're going to do geometrical optics. with vectors and matrices. So these are matrix methods, or sometimes called the ABCD matrix. So first, let's start with a ray. How do we describe a ray? So we do it with a vector, which we just write as a little column with two entries. One is y, and one is alpha. And all that really means is if we have an optical axis here, and if we just have a ray anywhere with respect to this optical axis, say it's here, and it's going like that, then this is y. If you draw a line parallel to the optical axis, this angle is alpha. So that ray is characterized by y and alpha at this point on the optical axis. Now, if you move, say, to this point, well, we know that ray is going to go in a straight line. It'll have a new matrix, or it'll, there'll be a new vector that describes it. You can tell, well, it would be at the same angle. It would just be higher. So what we can do is keep up with what all the rays are doing, not just this one, but if you had an object, say, if this were an object here, it would be sending light in all directions. The light from this point of the object, they would all be at the same y, but it would just send light out at all different alphas but it would also actually have light coming all the way off the object at different y's and different alphas. So an object would give you sort of all these rays, but you can keep up with them with this simple vector. As we move along here, we could look at a few points here. This will be at, say, y naught and alpha, some height and some angle, and here it would be the same, the same y naught and the same alpha. But then it'll refract through the lens, and now here, say, it's at a lower height Maybe it's at about one half. Why not? And now it's at some negative alpha. Maybe it's at minus, uh, looks like about 30 degrees. So you can see how the vector lets you keep up with what the ray is doing.